Hello. Welcome. It's after lunch, so I know it's a tiring time for people. You've got to stay awake for all these talks. And I suppose just for the avoidance of doubt, this shirt does not mean I've lost a bet. It means that I'm winning one. So I'm happy. But Natalie and I are here today to talk not about awesome, violent pink Bula shirts, but about bill packs and in particularly customizing the build process around build packs. Um, what we want to do is introduce a couple of features that some of which you may know, some of which are very, very, very new, uh, in order to customize the build packs build process. So what I'm going to do first is go into a really short demo and then we'll go into kind of an overview of the rest of the talk uh, and we'll dig into, uh, dive deeper into uh, each of those features. So, the question always, I try and ask myself the question is, what, what, what problem are we solving? And the problem that build packs are trying to solve is, given my application source code, how do I get an OCI image at the far side? That's it, given my application source code, how do I generate an OCI image, AKA a Docker image, something that you can deploy on top of Kubernetes, something that you can do a Docker run with or a Podman run or whatever your runtime, chosen runtime environment is. Now, how many people here have used our pack tool before to generate an image? Can I see some hands in the air? Oh wow, it's roughly about half the audience. Fantastic, that's more than we expected. We must be doing some good work. Fantastic. So I've got a quick example here of using pack to build an image. Now, the typical user experience with the pack command line tool is simply pack build and then your image name. I've explicitly here decided to put in the dash dash builder to show that we're using the Paquetto builder in this particular instance. Now, we'll talk a bit more about builders and the entire build packs ecosystem in, in a bit, but it suffices to say at the moment that there are multiple providers for, 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 of builders. Build packs project is a vendor neutral CNCF project. There are providers from Google, Heroku, VMware, um, and other people that I've probably forgotten already, which is good. But whatever builder you're using, the output image will have the following, the, the similar characteristics. The output image is going to be small. It's going to be as small as is possible given and peck in only your application's dependencies. Um, the output of image is going to have a full software bill of materials. Uh, we know about the build process because we're controlling the build process. And because we control the build process, we can tell you what version of the Go compiler was used to build your Go application, for example. So the SBOM is pretty complete. Interestingly, though, we have byte for byte reproducibility on images. So that if you build an image, and then if you don't change your application's dependencies, and if you rebuild that image, you will get byte for byte reproducibility on that image. Now that's particularly interesting for you know, experimental workflows, whether they be in science or whether they be in, um, in data science or in um, other kind of uh, regulated industries. And the byte for byte reproducibility allows us to deploy some fairly advanced caching strategies. So if you build an image layer only that has your application dependencies, and if your application dependencies don't change, well, then we can reuse that layer when you rebuild your application. So your application source code might change, but that layer doesn't necessarily mean to need to change. Ooh, I'm going slow, sorry. Um, we don't use root when we're building, which is very important. Uh, Natalie will come on to that a bit later. Um, it's particularly important if you're the person providing the build farm for your application developers. That's me, hi. Um, and I don't want to give people root on all my boxes. And then Natalie will talk a little bit about rebasable images. But what we've done here in this demo uh, is built a multi-language application. The application here has a Go backend and a React frontend in, type, in TypeScript. Um, what's been produced in the image is an image with two entry points, and you can spin up each of those entry points. We can spin up the default entry point, which runs the backend, and we can spin up the uh, the entry point called web, which spins up the front end for this application. And you can see a screenshot of it in the bottom right. Now, that image 
the Build Pakistan IO image. I'll come on to in a little bit in a few slides time. But you can see the amazing hello world that is returned as the payload from the back end service. So what we have done is we have built reasonably quickly, just pack build example, a multi-language application from a mono repo. And just a little bit of word on what goes into that build and then what comes out of that build. What goes into that build is your application source code. And you saw me explicitly use a dash dash builder. What is a builder? Well, a builder is again, just an OCI image. It's an easy way for us to distribute collections of build packs. In addition to the collection of build packs that's distributed on the builder, it will have a build image. That's the image that the build packs actually run, in, run on whilst they do their, their, their work. And the builder generally contains a pointer to a run image, which lives generally on a registry. Uh, and that run image is the run image that's used as the base layer in your output application image. As I said, if we start and have a look at the build output, what you'll see is that at the base layer is the run image, the run image that's pointed to by the builder. What you'll see now is I'm going to build up this image in terms of layers. It's very much akin, if you've, if you've not used Pack before, it's very much akin to a multi-stage Docker build. But we would argue that there are more controls and guardrails in, 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 in build packs than in something like a multi-stage Docker build. Um, and what you can see here is the different layers that are being added to my application image. Um, the Node.js build pack in particular will contribute a Node engine, the Node runtime to the output image. And the Node.js build pack will also contribute just the set of Node modules that my application uses to that output image. Slightly by contrast, what we can see with the Go build pack is that it contributes the output binary, the backend binary to my output image. But the supporting build packs that actually provide the Go, to, the Go compiler and a mechanism for downloading the, the vendored modules, they're not part of the output image. They will run on the build image, but they don't have to be part of the output image. And this allows us to keep that output image as small as possible and distribute things that only are necessary at runtime. If you've used build packs before, you would expect all the nice goodness that we, we claim. You get yourself a, a software bill of materials that, as I said, is pretty complete. Uh, we'll sh ship your application source code on top of that, and um, we'll put the entry points in your image. Oh, and one more thing. I did mention caching. I'm not going to go into it in any kind of detail. But the byte for byte reproducibility on these layers does mean that we can cache most of those layers so that when you rebuild, as I said, and if any of these layers haven't changed, so you're using the same node engine, for example, then we just choose that layer from the registry and we don't have to rebuild it. So there's a lot of efficiencies built in there. So that's a quick demo. And hopefully at this stage, you're going to agree with me that Pack build is a nice, neat, straightforward way of taking your application source code and turning it into an output image. Now, there may be people in this audience that are thinking, my build process isn't that straightforward. I need to customize one or two things here. And that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of the talk. Five kind of ways of customizing the build packs build, pretty much an increasing order of complexity. So we'll first talk about environment variables. We'll then talk about remixing the existing build packs. Uh, we'll talk about something that we call inline build packs. That's where my little logo example is going to come back in again. Uh, we'll then talk about a new feature that was released when? Yesterday. Yes, this is hot off the press, folks. A uh, new feature that was released yesterday called Docker file extensions. And then we will point you to some documentation about writing your own build pack. Right. My image contains a Go backend and a React front end. Can we customize the Go version that we used in that image? Oh, this used to work for another Irish guy. If I say, can we use, if, can we, if I say, can we customize the Go version, you say what? Yes. Yes, yes we can. Right? Great Irish guy came before me, Mr. Obama, and he popularized this. So if I say, can we customize the, Node, uh, the, the, the Go version using the image, the answer is yes. 
Yes, we can. And can we customize the Node.js version also used in the output image? The answer is? Fantastic, thank you very much. And how do we figure out how we could customize these things? Well, I'm using the Picado Builder. What I'm going to do is use my pack tool again just to inspect their builder. And it's going to print out for me all the build packs used in that builder. And I'm going to jump to the documentation that, they're, um, that the Paquetto folk have already written for us. And you can see that their documentation tells you precisely what environmental variables are available to customize things at build time. There is a BP underscore go underscore version environment variable that I can pass either on the command line or you can see that in the bottom right hand corner, I can put it into a project.tumble file in my source code. And then I can then point that to Go version 1.20.3, which I think is the latest Go version if I wanted to for today. Now, I'm using something slightly more advanced from the Paquetto folk. I'm using their BP underscore keep underscore files environment variable. I went to their documentation, I read it. Turns out that usually the Go build pack reads the Go source, it compiles the binary, and then it doesn't put the Go source put code on the output image, because that just doesn't make sense in Goland. But if I'm building a polyglot image where I've got Go source code and TypeScript source code, I will, not, I will want to keep all those files on the output image. And this customization, by reading their documentation, I can use the BP underscore keep underscore files environment variable and keep all that lovely TypeScript on my output image. But environment variables aren't just for application developers. They are for platform operators as well. Now, you're a platform operator if you're the person who maintains your CI pipelines that use PAC. Or maybe that's a GitHub action, or maybe that's a Jenkins pipeline of some stage. Or you're a platform operator if you use the Kubernetes operator, KPAC, to monitor Git repositories and produce images anytime changes are in, in the Git repositories. As a platform operator, I can choose to either default end users, application developers, to specific versions of these environment variables. And I can also choose to override end users environment variables. And that makes it easy for me to customize support and even enforce corporate standards. So if we say that we only support Python 3.10 and Python 3.11, well, I can default to Python 3.10 and allow the, an end user to choose Python 3.11. Second thing we can do uh, in terms of order complexity is to start talking about remixing the build order. Again, I'm using a builder from Paquetto Project, and the Paquetto Project has amazingly wide support for a lot of language stacks. It's got support for Ruby, Python, PHP, but by default, their builder builds either a Ruby application or a Python application or a Java application. And in my polyglot land, I want to build a Go and TypeScript application at the same time. Terrible example. English is not a good example when you want to use or an exclusive or an and in the same sentence, but hey. I want to build a project that is both a Go project and a TypeScript project. So what I'm going to do is, well, the question is, uh, yeah. I suppose, can we remix the build order of the build packs? And the answer is? Yes. Oh, thank you. Glad I didn't forget that one. Um, and it is another feature of this project.toml file that I have here on the left-hand side. What I'm doing here is picking out two build packs particularly and saying that I want to build my project using only the Node.js build pack and only the Go build pack and use them please both at the same time rather than using them exclusively. Um, yeah, and this functionality reuses a lot of, uh, this allows us to reuse an awful lot of pre-existing functionality without actually going out and re rewriting source code or even going as far as writing a build pack. Then, a third way of extending the build pack's build process, and here we're more talking about it, uh, something that I know Natalie will talk about later, something like more like an escape hatch. Sometimes, and just sometimes, you really just need to run a shell script. I know it's not pretty, people, and I know we don't want to admit to it, but can I use curl to download an image or a picture at build time and put it on the application image? 
Yes, we can. I can use curl. If curl exists on the build image, I can use curl to take the buildpacks logo from buildpacks.io and output it into logo.svg on the application image. And that's quite cool. I've actually here in the kind of last five or six lines there written a small build pack in shell script. It's a restricted build pack, so we tend to call it an inline build pack, but it's a script that runs as the build pack called example slash logo. That does bring us on to the more complex ways of doing things, and that is where I have to hand over to people who know more than I do. So Natalie, please. Great, hello. <laughs> Um, okay, so we did say at the beginning of this talk that uh, build packs take your source code and turn them into OCI images without the use of Docker files. So you might be wondering at this stage what we mean by Docker file extensions and how they fit into a build packs build. So to understand the need for this escape hatch, we have to talk a little bit about the CNB specification. Right? We mentioned that build packs are a spec. Um, anyone can write a build pack, but those build packs are expected to conform to certain limitations. Right? Among them, build packs run rootless. Um, they're limited in what they can do. Right? And this is by design. This is the value of cloud-native build packs is that you're putting constraints around your build process and you know, not allowing anything to happen, but only the things that you've uh, allowed. Right? But sometimes you just need to do something custom on a per application basis. So it might be downloading an image from the internet or it might be installing uh, an operating system package that's not there on the base image, right? And in that case, a build pack is really too limited, right? So we need something else. And I have to ask you, can we use Docker files to extend our build or runtime base images? as of really, really as of yesterday. So let's talk about how we used to solve this problem, right? Um, here we have a base, a base image. It could be our build time base image or our runtime base image. The strategy is kind of the same. And we need a custom package for one of our applications, right? So we just add it. We just install it uh, ahead of time to the builder. But as you can imagine, the number of packages that you've added to your, your base image can be quite large, right? And each package may only be needed by one application, right? This is not the ideal, right? So the new way that we've allowed is you start with your base image. You can keep it very lean, right? And then at build time, we detect what additional actions might be required. Right? And we generate a Docker file that then is applied to the build or the runtime base image in order to extend that image before the build packs run. So then after this whole process happens, you get the build pack provided layers, the SBOM, and all of the things that you come to expect from your build. So how it works, um, just to take a step back, right? A build pack, all it is, is a piece of software, right? It reads your application directory. It determines what actions might be needed in order to build that application. And it contributes dependency layers, right? We've introduced sort of an analogous concept called an image extension that does something very similar. It reads your application directory. It determines what actions might need to be taken in a Docker file and generates that Docker file for application as part of the build process. So these are just examples of Docker files that might be output, right? On the left here, we have a build.docker file, which as you might expect is going to be applied to our build time base image. And all it does is install curl, right? And we have a run.docker file that will be used to extend the runtime base image, and it does the same thing. The run.docker file is, uh, is a little bit special, right? In the case of a build Docker file, we really don't want to change the, the build time base because that has the build packs that we've already detected that we need, right? So we have this arg base image from base image, which basically just means I don't care 
what builder, what build base image I'm starting from, just do this stuff on top of that, right? But in the case of a run Docker file, we can actually use that from statement to switch to an entirely different base image, right? And this is actually quite powerful because you could imagine having sort of um, a fleet of run images that are available. Each one might be targeted to a particular language family. And so you can keep those run images, again, very lean with only the dependencies that are needed. So to kind of explain how this all fits together, we need to go into a little bit more detail about what actually happens during a build packs build. And I want to emphasize at this point that not every user or even most users of build packs need to understand um, the process at this level of detail, right? We want to keep the app developer experience as simple as pack build my app, right? But as an operator, um, you might need to know a little bit more detail. So this is how we use Docker files as part of a CNB build. We start with our application source directory. We put it through a process called detect where each of the build packs and the extensions get a chance to look at the source code and determine if they're actually needed during the build, right? And then we also generate any Docker files that might be necessary as part of that step. Then we branch in our flow, right? We apply the build Docker files to the build time base image, and then we run the build packs, right? So at this point, the build pack that needs to use curl is going to find curl installed. At the same time, we apply any of the run Docker files to the runtime base image, and we take the output ex extended run image, and that becomes the base of our final application image. So you can see it comes together with this extended run image and the dependency layers that the build packs provided. Uh, to make the final image. So um, at this point, as an app developer, you might be thinking about all the things that you can do with a Docker file, right? And you could Im even imagine providing a Docker file at the root of your source directory with all kinds of things that you want to add to your application as part of the build process, right? As a platform operator, you might be a little worried about enabling something like that, right? You can, you could write an extension that does that, but um, more likely you're gonna wanna have some additional control over what actually gets installed as part of this process. So we've given an example here of an extension, right? It's just a, cell, a shell script, right? And, and build packs can also be as simple as a shell. Um, it's given an output directory where it's expected to write files. And here it just writes out that run.docker file that does the curl install. So this is a really simple example, but you can imagine um, something more complicated, right? You have a list of approved packages, ones that are vetted and trusted by your organization, and you, you know, detect whether the application requests any of those and only install the ones that you've already pre-approved. So you still, as a platform operator, you still retain total control over what goes into your build. So let's go back to our example of the pack build and um, all of the nice things that we say uh, come along with using build packs, right? The small output image, the SBOM, reproducible build. But some of the things um, might not be available if you're using Docker files, right? In particular, some of us may be familiar with the limitations of caching with Docker files. Um, the rootless build, right? Like that's, that's gone out the window. Um, and then if you're familiar with the rebasable feature of build packs, that's something that may not be available anymore, right? It, Docker file provided layers might not be safe to rebase. So we do view this feature as um, something to be used, you know, carefully, right? It's an escape hatch, but it's something that we hope will help uh, people kind of surmount the barrier of those first builds and could even be used as a way to iteratively improve your build process. So finally, I think you already know the answer to this, but can you write your own build pack? 
Yes, you can, right? So again, C and B, the project, we provide the specification and the tooling, but we look to our community to provide the build packs. And there's some really great providers, uh, which we'll talk about in the next slide. But yes, you can write your own build pack and you can develop it in any language. It can be as simple as the shell script that we saw on the previous slide, um, or we recommend writing in Go. Um, we're Go developers, and there's some great tooling that you can take advantage of. Uh, we do have a build pack author guide and previous talks that go into much more detail about what is a build pack expected to do, how does it communicate with the CNB tooling, um, and, and we recommend that you check those out or come ask us because we're always happy to talk about how build packs work. So finally, just to summarize what we saw today, Aiden gave us a wonderful demo of pack build, um, a multi-language monorepo, so you can really see how powerful build packs are and the nice features that they offer. Um, but at the same time, to customize your build, you can go from something as simple as providing an environment variable or remixing the build order to writing your own very small, simple inline build pack um, to the more complex Dockerfile extensions and writing your own build pack. So again, just to talk about the ecosystem, there are a number of companies and organizations providing platforms, uh, build packs, or both. Um, and you could be one of them. <laughs> we are uh, an open source project. We love to talk to contributors. We love to hear from users and hear your feedback. Um, we are in the project pavilion. We have this lovely swag here. So please come by and talk to us. And thank you. Fantastic. So we have kind of five minutes for questions if there are any questions in the audience. Gentleman there in the blue. I think the microphones are on. Oh, fantastic. Oops. All right. So my question is mainly because my, my experience with Java native mm -hmm. crawl image build packs. Um, is it normal that a build pack downloads over gigabytes of compilers and, and libraries and everything every time you build an image? Depends. <laughs> um, it, it really does depend. Um, I mean, I don't have a huge amount of experience with the Paketo Java build packs, but I do know that they will have, um, they'll point to a JVM, which they'll need to pull down and extract. Then they'll resolve your, if you're using something like Maven, they'll resol resolve your Maven dependencies and Resolving Maven dependencies isn't, I mean, it's just a Maven problem, and it can take a lot of time to, to resolve. Now, having said that, depending on how you're doing your caching then, the layers can be cached for the subsequent builds. And by default, PAC should cache those layers for, for subsequent builds if it's got enough space. So the subsequent builds should be uh, cheap. But it's the same with any kind of process when you're building a container. If I was building a Java container on a rel base image, I'd have to pull down the, the, the JDK or PM and install that. And I mean, the, the, the JDK runtime is just the size that it is. Similar to the fact that my Node.js simple example, like that Node.js runtime is about 250 megs, which is a huge amount. Right, and is then only cached after a successful build of the complete thing or also the subsequent steps? Please, somebody who knows, answer yeah. this. We, we write the cache after we export the image. So if your build fails, that's it's too bad. But <laughs> um, we do offer, I mean, depending on the platform that you're using, like the pack tool, for example, offers support for arbitrary volume mounts. So you can mount in a local cache, but we kind of put red flags around that to say, you know, really be sure you know what you're doing here because can introduce problems. But right. the interesting thing about Java in particular is that the Spring Boot tooling itself uses a core component of build packs, the lifecycle, to produce an image. So you don't actually even have to go as far as running our pack tool. The Spring Boot tooling ha uses lifecycle, the core component of build packs internally, to spit out an output image. So if you're using Spring, you can take that route either. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. 
Um, I see a question there um, on the end of that row. Was the gentleman the person? Sorry, I can. Thanks. Uh, regarding the Dockerfile extension, I'm just unsure how do I feed that Dockerfile into the build process. So is build.dockerfile a set name or how does that work? Yeah, so the Dockerfile, uh, it's the responsibility of the extension, which you can think of as a, kind of like a build pack. It's the responsibility of that component to put it where the CNB lifecycle expects to find it. So. You can write an extension that says, I'm just going to look in the application source directory, and if I see a build.dockerfile there, copy it to the output directory, right? But we have that, the extension as that intermediary entity to kind of inspect the Dockerfile and make sure that you're only doing things that you approve of in that step. Okay, thank you. Cool. Uh, Nancy, gentleman here in the red, I think is... Uh, hello, I have a more uh, uh, general question. Uh, I'm pretty new to build packs, and uh, <clears throat> I was wondering where should I um, put build packs uh, as a tool, and uh, what is build packs responsible for? I mean, uh, we are designing a CICD pipeline, mm -hmm. and uh, we are migrating to a, a new stack. And I was wondering if if uh, build packs is a tool. I can customize to add uh, some uh, additional actions, actions be, be, uh, besides uh, a building, let's say running tests, uh, static code analysis, or uh, should I treat it just uh, as a, a narrow responsibility uh, block and just put, you know, testing, static code analysis, all the other stuff uh, elsewhere? So if you could yeah. clear it up. No, it's a really good question, um, and it's, it's come up a bunch of times. Uh, what exactly is the responsibility of pack build? Or, um, In its narrowest conception, we take your application source code, we turn it into an image. What you do with that image is up to you afterwards. You can then use that image maybe to run tests as part of a subsequent CI pipeline step, or you can go ahead and deploy that image if you want to. Now, the questions come up so often that there is a proposal now that we kind of delineate execution environments and make the build packs process a bit more amenable to building a test focused image and then a subsequent production focused image. So it's something that we have had requests for and that we're working on. Okay, so I understand this is just a dedicated stage of building and that's it. And if I want so to do something before uh, build packs or after, it's uh, just being put elsewhere, right? If I go back to what Natalie said earlier, the kind of key point here is we want to build images from our application source code. What I often don't want is to give tens or hundreds of developer teams control over that process because they just have too much else to worry about. And when there's a, a need to update a Python runtime or when there's a need to update a base image, they often don't have the, the capacity to deal with that. So if I can take a lot of that policy and pull it more centrally into a builder with some environment variables preset in it, then if I run that pack tool as part of a CI process, I'm going to be able to control the output images for those dev teams and let them, as Natalie was saying, focus on actual development rather than maybe more of the DevOps that they're less comfortable with. All right, thanks for clearing this up. So um, you said per default um, build, kit, uh, build packs are rootless. Does this mean that I can also run it inside a container, like if I have, for example, a GitLab Kubernetes runner, is this possible? Yeah, I mean, one of the constraints, again, I'm taking Natalie's words right from her mouth. Go on. Yep, uh, build packs are a component of the auto DevOps feature of GitLab, so uh, we know they work <laughs> in, in that environment. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, you know, build packs run rootless, and that enables uh, them to run in a variety of environments that require that. 
Okay, but when I now uh, think of an extension with a Docker file, then I would lose this feature. Do you have plans to maybe integrate something like Canico so that I'm still able to build it with a Docker file in a container environment? Yes, uh, I, I probably should have mentioned that when I went over the flow, but um, we actually use Conico to apply the Docker files to the build time and the runtime based image. So that under the hood, that's how we generate the Docker file layers. Um, we only say, you know, requires root if the commands you're running actually require root. Okay. Thank you. I think we probably have time for one more question. But again, if people want to go into more detail, we have the booth, so come on over and... Okay, maybe just a uh, general question. We are using Basel. So Basel follows more or less an approach. You build images with a Docker file and so on. What's in the section? Can we use uh, build packs in, inside Basel? Is there any kind of integration there? I am not personally aware of any integration with Basel. It wouldn't, Google use build packs in GCR and in, in Google Cloud Run. Um, so I know they provide a builder and they provide build packs. Um, I, I don't know much about Bazel, I'm sorry. Thank you. Cool, um, I think we've run out of time. Our friend at the back is furiously waving at us and I, I don't want to get manhandled off a stage by somebody. So um, thank you very much. Um, our booth's in the pavilion. <laughs>